So on a gas turbine engine, the fuel control is uh, achieved using two basic types of control system. One is the hydromechanical system, and the other is an electronic system. So with the hydromechanical uh, system, it's all based on, around uh, this formula, so that the fuel flow is dependent upon the area of the orifice and a pressure drop. And we can really su surmise that as, as this is some sort of a constant. Surmise that it's it's either it's dependent upon the area of an orifice and the pressure drop. So it's both these things. And I'll, I'll explain how that is later on in this video. Okay, so here is our um, throttle valve. Okay, so as the pilot moves the throttle. You know, he's varying this area here. Let, let me uh, draw that in. So it's it's this area here. So as the throttle opens, you know, this is getting bigger. And as it closes, this gets smaller. Okay, so that's what the throttle valve is doing. However, th this becomes sort of Venturi-like, okay, through this gap. Let me redraw that. So this is Venturi-like. And we, we know that with a Venturi, that when the fluid goes through the, the throat, there is a decrease in pressure and a decrease in area. Okay. Now, I, I, I said at the outset that the, the the whole premise of metering the fuel flow is based on this formula here. Okay, so it's area and pressure drop. So if we have a venturi, when we vary the area with the throttle valve, okay, we're varying the area, but we also vary the pressure drop. So we have two vari variables. So we need to to eliminate one of those variables, and we we do that by putting a pressure relief valve across. Uh, this throttle valve. So by putting a pressure relief valve across it, then the pressure here will be the same as the pressure here, and therefore the flow will only be dependent upon the area. So if I go back to the, to the previous slide, if I keep the pressure drop constant, then the flow of fuel will only be dependent upon the area. And that's the basic premise on, of how fuel control, the, the hydromechanical fuel control anyway, uh, works. So we need to have this pressure relief valve across the throttle valve uh, to, meter the amount, to meter the amount of fuel. Okay, so for the next couple of minutes, I'm just going to prove that, uh, that formula. So you can switch off now if you're not interested. Uh, but uh, here we go. Right, so the whole premise of this is that the energy at this point will be the same as the energy here. Okay, so we're not giving it any extra energy, so the energy in is equal to the energy out. So the energy in is the pressure energy, which is P1, V1, where V1 is the volume. The kinetic energy, MV1 squared over 2, and the potential energy, MGZ1. And that should be, so this is, we call this station 1, and this is station 2 over here. And that will be the same at station 2. Right, so we're going to get rid of this volume by dividing both, dividing this side by uh, V1 and this side by uh, V2. So the V1 goes, if I divide M by V1, uh, so mass divided by volume is density. And mass divided by volume is, is density. So that's where we get this expression. I'm just going to take the G out. So I'll take the G out of all the terms. And then the the G's uh, will, will cancel. And we're left with uh, this this expression down here at the, at, at the bottom. Okay, so the G's go. And I left the P1 over R1 G plus V1 squared all over 2 G plus Z1. Okay. All right, let's take that on then to the, to the next slide. Now, when the flow comes in, and when it goes out, 
they're both at the same height, z. Okay, that height is the same. So if the height is the same, we can cancel both of these. Now the mass flow of air or fuel coming in, mass flow is equal to rho AV. So the mass of flow of fuel coming here must be equal to the mass flow of fuel here. There's no change in mass. So rho A1 V1 is equal to rho A2 V2. Uh, we assume that the density of the fuel doesn't change. And that's a that's a fair enough assumption in, in low speed flow. So that goes. And then we're just going to rearrange this equation to get a value for V2. And we're going to put that value for V2 back in here. And that's what we're left with down here. Okay, so that's this equation here. And let's bring that over to the next slide. So that's where, we're, uh, where we left it. I'm going to bring uh, the pressure uh, components to one side. So P2 rho G comes over this side of the equation. And I'm bringing the V1 squared over 2G all over here. And this component here can be considered as A1 all over A2 V1 squared minus, and we could probably say that this is A2 all over A2, because A2 over A2 is just one um, V1 squared, and we put them into this uh, expression here. So we're going to copy this guy and substitute it in for this. Right, so that's what we have here. And we're just going to call all of this H for height. So the difference in pressure is the difference in rho GH. Okay, so this is the, this is the height difference here. So that was my expression for uh, H. Multiply both sides by 2G. And then get the square root, root of both sides. Get rid of these squares. That gives me a, an expression for V1. And I'm going to put that back into my a mass flow equation. So mass flow is rho A1 V1 is equal to rho A2 V2, but rho is, is the same on both sides. And then we just manipulate uh, this to get uh, this expression. So there's our pressure difference, and here's our area. Okay, And this A1 over A1 squared, this is the constant. So that's the, the equation that we, we started with. And I'll just go back to that now. So there it is. So the mass flow of fuel through the orifice is dependent on the area and the pressure drop. And for fuel uh, metering, we keep this constant. Okay. So then just by varying the throttle valve, we control the mass flow.